<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Bachelorette Recap, a guy's review. It is Hometowns, and we are on the home stretch. As always, it's your boy Dave Neal, stand-up comedian and host of the SAP Podcast, and I've been doing these recaps with you guys for six years running. Cheers to all of you. Today we're doing a Simpler Times Pilsner beer. Boy, have I been slammed busy with all of these recaps. I'm having a blast. You guys are showing up. Big shout out to you in the comments section. Y'all are just destroying it. So funny. So smart. Just appreciate all the new people that have been checking me out. All this. Guys, I have to tell you, before we jump into these hometowns, I have to tell you, I am so grateful to have this show as the one piece of my life that's normal okay we got a global pandemic out there i've been fired and 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 not working and trying to write a screenplay and doing stand up on the roof and i'm doing it you know in a parking lot and like the world has just gone to chaos and having a little bit of time to do some irreverent humor where we talk about the bachelorette i tell you what i don't hate it all right so let's get right into it oh that's nice that's a good one because all we want in life is just simpler times. This isn't a sponsor, but it should be. Because it's so funny. I was I was uh, going down the uh, the alley there at Trader Joe's, and I saw Simpler Times, and I was like, "What a great band! What a great brand! How apropos that we just want simpler times!" And we're having simpler times at La Quinta Inn and Resort in Palm Springs Desert. All right, hometowns. Chris Harrison probably loves that they don't have to travel for hometowns. You know, he doesn't like having to go to Des Moines or Albuquerque or wherever the heck these people are from. He gets to bring them all to him. But boy, how about this pressure on Tasha? Normally, she shows up to someone's hometown, right? She shows up and she's like, hey, nice to meet you, Pete, you know, whatever. And then, and then she goes on her merry way. These people took COVID tests. They traveled. They risking their lives. You know, Ivan's dad literally risking his life to be there. It's like, you better send him through to the fantasy suite. That dad didn't cross across, you know, come over into the desert so you can, you know, get sent home. All right, so, um, you know, it's interesting. So we did this recap last night. So between the recap and all the live streams and this and that, it, there's still more content to talk about. There's no wonder that this show is so highly discussed because as we'll see, the difference between someone like Zach and someone like Ben, emotionally speaking, you know, it just, you know, you, you just, you see, you see someone like Ben, we'll get into it at the end, but you just, you just feel for a guy who can't access that part of his heart. Anyway, I digress. We'll talk about it in a second. So yeah, Chris Harrison loves this. He gets to do hometowns at his La Quinta resort. He literally is 19 seconds away from set, you know? Like, like uh, I don't know if you know this, but like shows, you know, production, it's like all about being on time. You're not a second late. Like everyone's ready to go. They're watching the clock, unions, lunch hour, this and that. I bet you Chris knows it's like literally down to the second how far he has to walk to get to set. This guy's done it for 25 seasons or whatever. Dude has just like mailed it in. All right, Brendan's up first. Starts to cry. All right, let's get into some emotions. He said after his father passed, his older brother has been the most important. Um, and then Ben, Ben says he can't cry. And it's like, look, take notes of Brendan and Zach. These guys have a healthy access to their emotions. You know, Brendan, he mean, he's, he's looking at his brother with the utmost gratitude. I mean, his brother looks like a nineties boy band member. You know what I mean? He's kind of got that like fire in his eyes. And then uh, my fiance Tasha was like, boy, geez, Brendan got all the looks in the family. And it's like, oh, the brother, he probably could pull something in his day, but, uh, what can you do? Um, they should have a show for old, I know his brother's uh, married or with, you know, whatever, but they should have a show, show for older, uh, you know, people that might not fit into the bachelor in paradise world. Like that aren't the Kennys and that kind of, you know, hooligan age. There's someone older. They want to have a nice casual date and then, you know, go, go hang out, play some shuffleboard. Yeah. Maybe that's a boring idea. Maybe not. All right. Um, here we go. So the, so then uh, ben, uh, Brandon goes off on the date, and then Zach, he goes, uh, he breaks the tension. He says, can I get some hugs around here? I just love these guys. I really do. I really love how they're really just showing this camaraderie that they built in a pandemic at a desert resort in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it really is wild times that they've been able to go from, you know, where they were months before there to, like, having this sort of, like, fraternity of there's a little brotherhood. I mean, they're happy for each other and that's how you should be because you're not competing against each other. It's like, Tasha's going to choose the guy that's right for her. You're just showing up to do all the work and you're trying your best and hoping it's you. Oh boy. I, I really feel bad for the prop master on this one. 
I mean, he has to find stupid little props for them to use because they don't have a hometown to go to. They're looking for a slice of pizza. They're looking for a brownstone canvas. I mean, really, they better give this guy a good raise, this prop master. You know, Brendan's got a whole little little fake stupid carnival. He's like, yeah, well, my hometown has carnivals. It's like, no, they don't, Brendan. They don't have carnivals. I'm from New England. We don't do carnivals, okay? <laughs> they, just, oh, they just found a ski ball set. They're like, oh, give it to Brendan's season. And like, you know, what's you know, just the odds that Brendan, that, you know, he was like, I guess we're going to go throw these rings at the thing. I guess that's what they do. I don't know. Uh, they tried their best, and I've always given Bachelorette and the producers credit. They took this season, and they milked it for all they could. And I don't even mean that in a bad way. They worked with a tough situation. This show used to be built on the B-roll of them traveling and seeing new things. And like none of that exists now. And I like it because it's more meat and potatoes, less of the... You know, uh, accoutrements. Let's get to the main course. You know what I mean? Um, Brendan's niece, adorable, right? It's always good. It's just, it, it makes you feel more of a connection to these contestants when you can see them being good dads, brothers, nieces, whatever. You know what I mean? Uncles. Um, just good to see the contestants have a family they care about, which sounds so simple, but that those are the facts. You see, sometimes we just see these guys as like, Oh, he's a douche or this or that. But it's like, then you see them and how they're delicate with their family and you realize, okay, they're just like you and I. They're just like you. They just have nicer teeth and they have less body fat percentage. That's the only difference. You know what I mean? Boy, they go into a bouncy house. Credit to the prop master for that one. Uh, Tasha defies gravity in that bouncy house. The wardrobe was really uh, getting all that... Um, you know, tape them down, boys. All right, let's just move on. Brendan's, uh, by the way, I'm doing these at night the last couple of days just to bang these out, if you know what I mean. Speaking of fantasy suite, but I um, hope you guys enjoy this. Leave a comment. Hit the subscribe button. We've got a whole bunch of new subscribers out there. Appreciate you guys so much. So hit the subscribe button. Watch, like it, comment. Those things help me. And if you guys have been following me along, the more subscribers I've gotten, the more I've invested back in the show doing live streams. Tomorrow, uh, Next week, I'm going to be doing a live stream after the finale. So stick around if you're West Coast. West Coast live stream after the finale. We're going to talk it all out. We'll have some more simpler times. It'll be a, a lot of fun. And then I think what I'm going to start doing for um, Matt James' season is that his name Matt James? Jeez, I don't even, you know, you can only remember so many names on this show. By the way, I don't do any edits, so what you see is what you get. None of this jump cut and BS. Like, what you see is what you get. But for the next season, I think I'm going to do a weekly night, uh, that night, a West Coast uh, live stream, uh, you know, recap. Because, you know, it's nice to do get these out the next day, but I think it's also nice to, like, talk about it in the moment. So if you're on the West Coast or if you're on the East Coast and you're a night owl, is that a term, night owl? If you stay up late... You know, maybe you can uh, come check out our live streams. Hit the alert button, all that jazz. You'll get all the info for it. Uh, Brendan said, if I could have molded a bachelorette, it would have been Tasha. Well, you used a lot of clay there. She's got a lot of clay on those parts. Uh, I, I like what he was saying. He, if you could have molded a bachelorette. That's like what the uh, evil uh, witch did in the show Power Rangers. What was her name? Like Zelda? What was the evil lady's name? She would get these little molds of these warriors and like put them in an oven. And then they would turn into those little sort of like um, guys that they would beat up. Right? What a, you know, I'm trying to remember my 90s. It's been, a, it's been a minute. All right. Let's cut over to Zach. We go to Zach's hometown. Other side of the plaza, they just walk across the street, uh, going to do some, uh, they say, we're going to go do some New York things. And I immediately thought about peeing in a subway station. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, New York things, vomit, vomiting on a sub, you know. Um, but they actually kind of did what I was thinking, like the fun way to go, where it's just start yelling at pedestrians. You know, like, let's do some New York things. Let's go to Times Square and yell at the pedestrians for taking a photo outside the, uh, you know, uh, peanut M&M star. Like, what are you doing? Um... Never get between a New Yorker and his bagel technique, okay? Like, you know, Zach knows exactly what he, wanted, he, what he wants in a bagel. And Tasha's like, what if we put a blueberry on the bagel? Zach's like, you can't put a blueberry on a bagel. You kidding me with a blueberry on a bagel? She's like, well, you put him in the bagel. Why don't we put him on the bagel? He's like, no, 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 no. You don't put blueberry on the bagel. Nothing better than at night. Uh, nothing better than when I lived in New York City, a night drinking, the next morning getting a nice bagel and a coffee. There's just some things in life I can wax poetic about all day long, and New York City is one of them. Zach and Tasha, they get freaky in the fountain, as it were. Freaky in the fountain. 
You wouldn't do that in a New York City, New York City water fountain. You would not be doing that. That is a homeless man's bidet. Let me tell you about that. You do not go in a water fountain for any reason in New York City. I don't care if there's a whole bunch of gold doubloons at the bottom of it. You let them be. You let somebody else fish them out. Uh, Tasha meets Zach's parents. Uh, boy, hopefully they weren't like looking out the window at that water fountain. Like, wow, geez, wow, they're getting frisky over there. Getting frisky over there. Uh, Jack, uh, Zach credits his family for saving his life. Zach's brother asked Tasha where she is at with Zach compared to the other three. She doesn't answer directly, which is interesting. And then he goes, and then he goes like, "Look, now tell me, you're not answering. Where, where do you see?" It? And she's like, "Well, you know, like." I think she's obviously coached on what she should say and what she shouldn't say, but obviously she's got great feelings for Zach. I'm unspoiled, but it looks like Zach's going to be the guy. To me, I mean, you know, the difference between Zach and Ben, we'll get into it when we talk about Ben, but it's like this is a guy who's lived a life where he understands how to access the gratitude, humility, and love that he feels. And nothing can buy that. Nothing can buy the feeling of telling your loved ones that you do love them and you're just expressing yourself in the fullest amount. I mean, I've always been a sensitive guy, but I mean, I can't imagine the stoicism of not being able to just, what is that doing to your insides? You know what I mean? Who knows? All right. <clears throat> Zach's dad says, I'm not comfortable doing this, but I do feel comfortable with you. Zach's dad is the dad America needs right now. Okay. There's some other good dads on the show, but Zach's dad, the stories we've heard where Zach was at a bank trying to forge his dad's signature because he was an addict and he needed money for drugs or whatever was happening, got a DUI, he got, you know, had a divorce, he's, he's hit his low. What does Zach's dad do? He shows up to the bank because they called him and he gets his son to rehab and he says, it's over, son. And that is a dad, okay? That's, I'm not a dad. So I don't know what I would do, but that is a dad. And you know a dad when you see one. And Zach's dad is the dad we all need right now. If you could nominate someone for dad of the year, Zach's dad, nominate dad of the year. Am I projecting a little bit? I grew up as a, with a single mom. I, my stepdad's a great guy. He's amazing. I mean, honestly, amazing. But I just have this thing that I see when I see a good dad and I go, that's a good dad. That's a dad that let that, that you failed. You showed him your worst. And what did he do? He said, it's okay, son. It's over. And then he helped him back off. On his, I mean, come on, right? What else do you need to say? I think we all agree. Tasha says, I'm getting a little um, introspective out here with my simpler times. Tasha says, Zach's family is protective, but in the best way possible. What do you want? They're New Yorkers. They're protective. Hey, you don't mess with us. We get Cousin Vinny out there. He works in the waste management. He's going to dump you in the Hudson. You know what I'm saying? No, they're good people. They're good people. Just don't, don't, you know, you don't want to wrong them. That's who you want. You want the good, you want the good, good, the good kinds that'll tell you how it is. Get a slice of pizza. Tell you how it is. And yell at a couple pedestrians. That's what you want. Ivan's hometown, good hometown. Ivan had a great hometown. Least amount of cleavage so far. She really went church girl for Ivan's hometown. I don't know. No, she wore a skirt, but I mean, she really put the uh, put the friends away. Uh, maybe that's because JoJo left. I don't know. Um, trying to feel bad for these guys. Boy, they are sweating. But uh, homeboy's got a long sleeve shirt on. Ivan, what are you doing? It's the desert. It's Palm Springs. You got to wear linen, folks. You got to wear linen and tank tops. These guys were in the this and that. I mean, you, if you if you don't know what the desert's like, folks, it gets to 120 plus degrees out there. You can't go outside in the daytime. All right, you can't walk barefoot on the the astroturf. Your feet will melt. It's everything's on fire. There he is, just sweating in a long sleeve shirt. Come on, uh, Ivan's niece sends them a cooking video. Uh, he helped raise her while his brother was in prison. Uh, this is the package we craved, right? This was the video that we all craved. Real people, real issues, just humanity. Nothing's always perfect. You know, I was doing the live stream, um, meeting the women for Matt James season, and you get that uh, one girl, Kit. She's a socialite who's 21 who lives in West Village with her parents. And it's like, and again, maybe she's got a story to tell, and I digress, but it's like these are the families that have a story to tell. Ivan's parents, Ivan's brother in prison, Ivan watching after his uh, niece. These are the stories of America, of humanity that we like to see. Not someone who's been given everything with a silver spoon. Ivan's parents are, uh, will be joining them. I, they show up. Dad had cancer twice. Now he's got pulmonary 
fibrosis. I think I said that right. Uh, COVID would be a death sentence. I mean, geez, no pressure there, Tasha. The guy's like one sneeze away from losing it. You better, uh, you know, choose Ivan, I guess. I never thought Ivan and her had that close of a connection, but I'm starting to see it. Ivan's a smart guy. He comes from a he comes from a you know an interesting family. Mom super outgoing. Dad barely hugs him back. I don't know if the dad had any restrictions with his um issue or whatever, or he just couldn't hug. We've all got that in a dad who can't hug. I got a stand up joke about my stepdad only patting me on the back whenever he hugs me. You know what I mean? It's like some dads they couldn't they couldn't express those emotions. How sad is that? How sad is that? Tasha's wearing a very similar outfit to um, Ivan's mom. Hey, that's a good thing. Dress like the mom, right? It's a good thing. Ivan's, it's so funny. It is so funny how women dress when they're with the guy's mom versus how they dress when they're with you. You know, all of a sudden we're all going to church. You know what I mean? It's like, where is that before? You know, I like it. I appreciate it. It's respect. I get it. Um, Ivan's mom says she's still a big skeptic. I always appreciate parents like this. We, we like parents that don't just buy into the system. You should be a skeptic. Three weeks ago, they didn't know each other. Then they're always like, well, you got to trust the process, which involves sleep deprivation, getting rid of social media, you know, Instagram famous. It's like, there's a process, all right. Um, love Ivan's dad. He said he got married too young also, relating to Tasha. It's really cool when you can see someone of different generations, you know, decades apart. And he's like, I did the same thing. You know, because what we realize, and I guess this recap tonight we're talking about is humanity. We realize that while we might have different um, experiences, a lot of us have the same common denominators when it comes to love or lost or missed opportunity, regret, you know, and it's, and it's, uh, you know, that's the thing with, with the youth is that when you're young, you're, you are dumb to an extent, like, you know, it's, it's the funny, it's the saying young, dumb, and full of cum, but it's like. That's kind of the truth. You're you think you know it all. You're you're brave. You can you can do it all. When an older person shares with you their wisdom, listen, listen, and that's that's kind of the weird thing. And you know, the older people get, the the more we throw them to the curb. I really wish our society was more built around like really respecting the wisdom of older people. Even going back to the other dads, you know, what I mean, like they were just great guys. Zach's dad, like I said, these I'd I'd sit there and let them talk to me all night long, <laughs> you know. Uh, Ivan says he's not ready to propose, but he's on the right path. That's fair. That's fair. He's on the right path. Ivan's brother surprises him. I'll tell you what, I'm watching this show. I'm watching the show just like you guys. And twice he said, you know, I just wish my brother could have been here. And I'm going, that's no accident that they put that in there twice. And then sure enough, the brother shows up and there I am. I started to tear up. I sure did. I just, you just love seeing, like, he was so excited to see his brother and this guy that he values as a real close friend and confidant, and then he shows up, and there's just this moment that they have, and you can't make that up. You can't, these are the moments you can't make. They'll fabricate all the things they can on the show, but when they bring together people that really care about each other, that translates to the camera. No bells and whistles needed there. Uh, Gabriel, his name's Gabe. Gabriel, very biblical name, face tattoos, prison. Look, it's heavy stuff. I don't know what his story is. Most of us have no clue what he has gone through in life. The trials, tribulations, I couldn't begin to even contemplate what that is. <sighs> Heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. And then you got Ivan, who's like the complete opposite. You know? I don't know. I have no opinion over it other than he seems like a good guy. And he seems like he's uh, was dealt a tough hand. And, and, and that's what life comes down to, doesn't it? And a hand are we dealt. That's what it comes down to. All right, time for Ben. Let's get into Ben. All right, so let's run through this. Ben says, uh, even though Venice isn't his hometown, it's more interesting than Indiana. Yeah, they couldn't get any, you know, prop cornfields to bring in there for Indiana. Venice is a wild town. Let me tell you, we went there during the middle of the pandemic. It is a lawless city. Don't go to Venice, folks. Just skip it. Boy, the beach is nuts. I'm telling you, Venice is a wild place. They do a juice bar. They sit poolside and pretend it's a beach. Uh, ben tells Tasha she's going to meet a family friend named Antonia. Ben says they are, they are eerily similar. Look, don't tell your girlfriend that she is similar to your female family friend. That's, is it because all of a sudden Tasha's like, oh, really? Now not, she's got like a million things going through her head. Like she better not be cute. She better not be cute. Ben's parents can't show up because his dad's a doctor. Is that is that really the reason? I mean, I'm, I shouldn't question it. You know, you want doctors to obviously, like, it's an important time for them. But, you know, maybe a video call or something. I, it seems like they just didn't want anything to do with this. And, you know, who don't, you know, wouldn't be surprised. Why would they? 
Uh, vibes on this family date are they're way less cordial. This family date is more like family friendly. There's no mom or dad to impress. They they, they all hit it off well. Tonya tells Ben that um, that he loves Tasha, and then he goes, "I don't know." And then she goes, "You love her." <laughs> she goes, "You love her." And she says, just let go. How about that? It was great advice. She offered great advice. It's too bad that Ben didn't listen to the advice. He didn't tell her he loved her and he didn't just let it go. Uh, ben says he blew it, that he's in love with her and should have told her. They go to the rose ceremony. Ben hasn't told Tasha he loves her. He tells Chris Harris and I'm going to tell her if she gives me the rose. He loves her. It's like, why are you waiting? Why are any of us waiting to tell anyone we love them? I tell I tell this story almost every year about my fiance, uh, Tasha. I am said Tasha. I, think I get them confused. I was saying this to, uh, to Tasha and I was like, look, I told Tasha I loved her very early on in our relationship and I had no qualms with it. I wasn't afraid that I was going to scare her off. I was like, look, I'm just going to tell you how I feel and I'm not going to make it a bigger deal than it is. It's a big deal to feel the love, but I think it's a bigger deal to like wait for like later or don't like, I'm not playing politics. So like, I'm going to set the tone right now that this relationship, I'm going to be open and honest about how I feel and I love you. And that was very easy for me to do. She didn't say it back. I think she said, thank you. But uh, I also didn't care. I didn't care. I wasn't telling her I loved her, waiting for her to return it in the moment because I, un- I actually understood she did love me. You know what I mean? I feel like when you're in a relationship and you really know things are good, the confidence that comes with that is so helpful because you don't have to be like, I love you. Do you love me? It's like, no, no, I love you. And you don't have to tell me that back right now. And she did, you know, relatively soon thereafter. But like, you got to be comfortable in your own skin. Unfortunately, Ben's not there. And I thought Ben was going to go home, but then I maybe th- I maybe thought she was going to keep Ben over Ivan. I wasn't uh, completely sure. You know, I like to I like to type this out before I tell you, just to tell you where my mind was at. Ben goes home. He needs to do some emotional work. He goes, "I'll be all right. I'm always all right." That was the toughest line to hear. He goes, "I'm going to be fine." Because you know he will be fine. The dude's an army vet. He will be fine. But it's not about being all right. It's not about being fine. It's about being your truest, most most authentic version of who you are. And he's just not there. It's false bravery. I get it. But the poor guy's speechless. I mean, do you see this, this face that he had? He can't access that part of the heart. Or if he can, he can access it, but he can't withdraw from it. It's like having a million dollars in the bank, but you can't take anything out. It's in there. It's in all of us. And you just can't get that out. And if you can't get that out and show the people you love that you love them, you're doing them a disservice and you're doing yourself one as well. I hope that he's able to look back and to be retrospective and understand that life's about just like really accessing all the different parts of you, whether it's mind, body, or soul. And he's just got a long way to go. And don't we all, don't we all have a long way to go? You don't know until you don't know. And he's not there right now, but hopefully that he can see himself and get there. I mean, he's a lot, he's light years past guys like Yosef Yusuf. But um, when it comes down to it, he wasn't there. And guys like Zach, guys like Ivan, guys like Brendan, they were, they were able to access that and, and tell Tasha that they loved him. And why should she wait for a guy who can't say that? You know what I mean? So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the support you've been giving me. I'm doing a live stream at 4 p.m. on Thursday. If you want to check out any of the other uh, Bachelor live stream content, that's where I talk to the comments section. We have a lot of fun. It's open-ended. It's loose. It's a total blast. Uh, We're having so much fun with that. So that's 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And every day leading up to December 25th, I'm doing a vlog. It's called Vlogmas a different Christmas-themed vlog every single day. So check out that content. I'll post a little like thumbnail up there, and you can click on it. They're a blast. They're a ton of fun. They're only 8 to 10, 12 minutes long. And uh, I really appreciate you. So I, I appreciate you guys supporting my other content. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.